Lisa. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. We're talking about adaptogens. Let's just get straight into it, right? Because this is a really great topic. This is something that maybe you um, should consider. I'm definitely not saying that you should. I want you to take this video as an opportunity to just get some information and go and do your own research and consider, is this an area for you that could be really valuable in the same way that it has been for me and for my own clients? So we all know that stress causes HA, right? You don't eat enough, it equals stress. You overexercise, stress. You have a lot on your plate all the time, stress, right? It's a stress issue and it's usually a combination of a few of these different stresses that is halting our period, our whole like endocrine system, our hormonal system. So typically we can actually just elicit results in recovery from eating more and resting more, right? Many of us know this, we all have heard this before and we've experienced it. But the more I do this work, the more I see more challenging cases, right? And when I say challenging cases, typically that's like, okay, they're already doing those things. They've been doing those things for six months, 12 months more, and we're not really budging. We're not really seeing a whole lot of results. Upon further investigation, I'll usually find that this is a chronic stress issue. I'm going to take a, okay, let's de-stress first and then revisit the nutrition piece. You do need to have the nutrition and rest in place, right? You cannot do adaptogens and supplements and things to get out of recovery alone, right? These are the small rocks. The big rocks must be in place first. You must be eating enough. You must be resting. Okay. But you know, what happens when the eating and resting isn't working? So adaptogens, if you are someone who is dealing with a lot of stress, a lot of busyness, a lot of anxiety, maybe sleeplessness, extreme fatigue, this is something that could help you. The use of adaptogenic herbs is actually supports and helps our neuroendocrine system. It can be very therapeutic for it. It allows for our body to actually like replenish and negate a lot of the effects of stress. So it's kind of like this helpful little tool to help you calm down and ease into the day and ease into this process. So if you're having trouble eating more, if you can say like, look, my stress, my anxiety is literally stopping me from eating enough, stopping me from resting, you know, maybe this is going to be a helpful entry point for you. Taking an adaptogen, allowing you to better handle stress might allow you to then better do the work of eating more and resting. You know, it's very individual. So the cool thing about adaptogens is that they directly help with our endocrine system, right? So HA is like, oh, we don't have enough estrogen and progesterone, LH and FSH to like have a period. But it's, that's not the only thing going on in your body. If you don't have a period, you probably also have like low ADH, antidiuretic hormone, which means that you're waking up to pee in the middle of the night more regularly. Or maybe you're not sleeping as well or taking longer to fall asleep because melatonin, which is also a hormone, isn't being produced. You know, there are other things going on for you that are individual to you, but that adaptogens might be able to help with because it's all an endocrine system issue. So adaptogens, as the name may suggest, allows and helps for your body to adapt to stress. So it's a helpful tool for allowing your body to adapt and get stronger and more resilient to life's day-to-day -day stresses. This is called allostasis. And this is why you can't compare your recovery to someone who you think is seemingly similar to you, right? Because they're differently adapted to stress. So adaptogens actually cause a biochemical influence on the hypothalamus, which directly results in affecting the stress responses that come from our hypothalamus, right? Cortisol and adrenaline. It means that it's controlled in our hypothalamus and our hypothalamus is releasing too much stress too much cortisol, too much adrenaline hormone, and that is suppressing our other hormonal functions like our reproductive system. So adaptogens actually help to calm that, to negate the spiking effect and bring it down into a more homeostasis level. I'm actually going to put a link in the show notes to a video that actually breaks down. It's not my video, it's someone else's, but it's a really great video that breaks down how stress hormones are actually released in the body. It's a, and you'll see it's a 20 minute process that happens in your brain when something stresses it out and it spikes cortisol and adrenaline and your whole body is affected, right? Your nervous system and your endocrine system are affected and it takes 20 minutes to complete and close the loop. And if you're going through this 
20 times a day, of course we don't have a period. So adaptogens can help to negate that 20 minute loop cycle from happening over and over again through the day and keep you in a more homeostasis type state. The cool thing about this is that it also doesn't stop cortisol and adrenaline from being utilized when you actually need it, right? It just means that it's not going to be spiked on such small uneventful, unnecessary stresses, like being late for work or something, right? The next time you're super late for work, you're not gonna freak out like you usually do. Or the next time your husband is like, hey, let's have pizza for dinner, your brain doesn't just like explode out of total stress at the prospect of that, right? The adaptogen helps to bring you into a more calmed state. Now this isn't all adaptogens and I'm going to go through a few different adaptogens in some different videos and you can see which ones have a more calming effect, which ones have a more stimulating effect and decide for yourself which ones that you need. But in a nutshell, this is how adaptogens generally work. So I want you to just kind of imagine to help give this a visual, imagine you are a rainforest and you're super lush and there's all this wildlife going on and some big ass company comes and starts cutting down your trees, taking your timber. Imagine that's you. Your, your wildlife is now all over the place. It doesn't know where to go. Like the plants um, have stopped growing. Your intricate root system underneath the ground is being affected because they're destroying you, right? But then imagine that some well-meaning group of volunteers comes along and stops that company in its tracks. It puts a barrier up around it and it starts to protect your land so that you can start to like naturally rebuild and regrow your root systems and start refertilizing yourself, right? Adaptogens are protecting you from the thing that's causing the stress and as a result, disrupting your rainforest, your endocrine system, your intricate environment that took you a lifetime to make, right? So this process takes time. And so adaptogens typically require you taking them on a regular basis consistently for a period of time to allow for that rebuilding effect to happen. Now remember that adaptogens and just healing the endocrine system in general is a very individualized process, right? Different people have different stresses, different issues, different health histories that must be taken into account. But over the next few weeks, I'm going to go through a few of the different adaptogens that I've come across next week's first one will be um, ashwagandha. And we'll just start to break down what they are. How do you take them? How do you dose them? And you can consider if there's something right that's right for you, but at a minimum, you have that tool, that information now to put in your back pocket that maybe adaptogens are something that's valuable for you. If not for getting your period back, but for acknowledging that maybe you're a higher strung, maybe you're a higher stress person, and in general, this will help with that. I'm also gonna start taking them myself, do a little bit of a regime and report back with some issues that I'm trying to resolve at the moment. And so we'll see how it goes and we can do this together if it's something that's right for you. But yeah, always consult your health practitioner. I hope this was helpful guys. Please subscribe so that you can get the whole series of this. If you like this video, definitely thumbs it up. And if you have any questions or requests, I would love to hear them. So please let me know in the comments. Make sure you listen to the whole HA podcast at the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea podcast and definitely sign up for the waitlist for the HA Society. This is a community of women that I have hosted. We have face-to-face -face community calls so you can chat with me just like this and work through and coach through a whole bunch of the issues that come up in recovery. I have exclusive videos that are not here on my YouTube channel that you can access as a member of the HA Society. So check out the link in the show notes or go to the hasociety.com forward slash join. Join the waitlist and you can be a member with us and get your period back with a team. All right, y'all have a great day.